we're now going to create a Visual Studio project that has multiple CPP files in it and a header file. So I've started Visual Studio 2019. I'm going to click on create a new project. We're going to choose empty project. We're working with C++. Click on next. I'll just call this multiple, All right? Name a project, whatever you like. Wait for this to create the empty project environment. All right, we have this empty project environment with no source files or no header files. I'm going to create my first source file. So I'll click on source files, right click, add new item. I want a C++ file. I'm going to call my first one main.cpp and that's where I'm going to put my main function. Right. Now, you don't have to put in a file called main. That's what I'm going to do. All right, so we know when we write a main function, right, every C++ has, program has one and only one main function. So even if you have multiple files in this environment, we can only ever have one main function and program execution will start with that. All right, so there's our simple main that doesn't do anything other than return zero to the operating system. We're going to use one-dimensional arrays. In this example, we're going to write a function that fills a 1D array with random values and another function that prints out the values in that array. In order to do that, we're going to create a header file to hold our function prototypes. So I'm going to go up here and choose header files, right click, add new item, select header file, and I'm going to call, so later we'll learn how to write classes. If we were creating a class, we'd probably give our file the same name as our class. Here, I'm just going to call this array hw, like your array homework. I'm going to click on add. Now, Visual Studio uses this preprocessor directive called pragma once. That's only su supposed to include your files once. So when we have files, like we had multiple C++ files at all, we're saying pound include IO stream. What that pound include does is it actually brings that code into your program and you don't want multiple copies of the same thing in your program, it will cause errors. Well, Pragma once isn't defined by the C++ standards and there are instances where it can get problems, probably likely not in our scenario in this class, but to avoid problems, we are going to use a header guard in this class. So do not use Pragma once, use the header guard. So the header guard, right, I'm gonna delete that. We say pound, sorry. Pound if not def. I can type. So it pound preprocessor directive if not defined. And then we're going to define the name here. And typically we use when this is just a library of functions, array hw. I'm going to use the file name underscore h. Some people put the word included. All right. So it that says if that's not defined, now we use a pound define preprocessor directive, we use the same name. So if the above is not defined, we're actually telling the preprocessor to define it. That means bring it in. This will end with a pound and if. So we end that if, this if block here. And now we write our function prototypes in between. All right, so our first function prototype will be for filling a 1D array with uh, random values. So, all right, I already have an example working here. Oh, I forgot to copy the forward slash. All right, so, yeah, that didn't copy very well. I might as well have typed it. And I don't know why this is showing up in green like this didn't, Read, oh man, I've not had the best day today. Comment, unclose it, and oh, duh, that's why. All right, pay attention to what I'm doing. All right, so this function is going to fill an array with random values. It has a pre, as a precondition, we're going to say A. So let's look at our function. Our function's saying fill array. It's not going to return anything, so its return type is void. It's going to have two arguments in the parameter list. One is an integer array, so data type int, Name of the parameter is A. We know it's an array by the empty bracket notation. And then we also want to usually pass the size, or sometimes this is called n, or sometimes people write length. So let's say that 
A is a reference to the integer array. N is the array length, the number of elements. Post condition elements in the range zero through n minus one. So index zero through n minus one are overwritten with random values. Elements in the range in the index range. All right. Now, function prototype needs to end with a semicolon. All right. So now we've declared our function exists. All right. We want to create a CPP file that matches this header file. So we're going to go back over here to source files, right click, say add new item. We're going to choose a CPP file. By convention, we use the same name as the header file. So array HW, but it ends with CPP, C++, right? Because we're going to write source code here, right? We don't typically write source code in our header file. A header file actually doesn't compile individually, right? It won't actually be checked till its contents are pulled into some other file. So over here in our CPP file, what we need to do is we now need to include our header file. So we're going to say pound include double quotes array hw.h. We use double quotes to tell the project environment to look locally in the same folder for our file. Right? This isn't some system file like IO Stream or C standard library that actually <clears throat> uses the uh, angle bracket notation which tells the system to go look in a directory where, where um, system files are stored. We want it to look here. That's where our file is going to be stored, so put double quotes around it. All right, so pound include array hw. Right? Effectively, now we have defined, we brought in this definition here, so any place we might use this function over here, it will this will already be defined and we won't come up with any implicit um, declarations if we're calling a function from within a function. Right? We won't have that happening here in this simple example. Uh, so now what we do is we define the function or write the source code. I'm going to copy paste this over here. All right, I'm going to get rid of the semicolon, write curly brackets to write the code, and we're going to fill the array with random values. So I'm going to say for int i equals zero i less than n plus plus i and i'm going to say now i want to store the name of my arrays a a at index i is where i want to store an integer value i'll call the rand function and that is going to return a random number except notice the rand function is underlined right remember rand is defined in the c standard library visual studio is saying identify rand is undefined well, anytime we use a function from a library, we have to include it. So up here, right, we can add pound include. Doesn't matter, you can add it before or after the dot h. C standard lib. Save that. Now it knows what that function is. Right? With random values, I sh should say maybe in the range zero to Rand max, so we're using the Rand function. Now, another point I want to make is while we're here, sorry, while we're here in the header file, these are the comments that our users see, right? If our users were using the library, they would be looking at the header file for these comments. And there are actually programs like Doxygen and all that, if we write our comments in a certain way, we'll actually create documentation for our header files. Right. So remember that black box concept that we said we want people to be able to use our functions without knowing how they're implemented. People can use them without knowing the source code inside. So we need to give them enough of a comment to let them know how to use them. And I think we've done pretty well here. Like I said, as an experienced programmer, we would look at this and well, we would know that A is an array. So it might seem redundant to say this, but we want to tell the user that A is a reference to the integer array. 
right? N is the array length of the number of elements in there to let the user know that. All right. And so over here, now we've got our fill array function. What we can do is we can actually compile individual files. Oh, so I could save this. Instead of building the whole project, sometimes if you're just working on one CPP file, you don't want to build everything else. You just want to compile that file and check to see if there's syntax errors. So right now, while this file is active, I can bring up build, I can say compile, and that's actually just going to compile this particular uh, source file, CPP file, and it succeeded, there were no errors. All right. Now we don't run compile with this, uh, compile won't do anything for a header file. Like I said, it's not until this header file is included and brought into other code that it actually checks the, see, the syntax in there. So we don't run compile on that. All right. Now over in May, let's go ahead and use our function fill array. In order for main to have access to this, we have to include the header file where we declared all of our functions. So we say pound include, right? array hw dot h, the name of that file. We use the double quotes that says look locally for this file. And now we can begin to see why this header guard might be important. Like this header guard here says only define every, all of the code within this, so between the define and the end if, only define all of that code once. So what happens is when the preprocessor is running, over here, when we said to include array hw.h, it wants to bring that, these definitions, these declarations in. Over here, when we say to include that, it wants to bring the declarations in. And you can think of this as putting everything in one massive file. And if we have these declarations in twice, the compiler won't like that, right? It'll say that things have been defined twice. It won't know which one to use, right? That's what this header guard prevents. This prevents this from bringing in the same code twice. All right, so now over here, now that we've included this, we can actually call the function fill array, but we need to create an array here. So we need to create an integer array here in main. I'll just call this my array. All right, I'm just gonna hard code in 10. All right, hard coding is not the best practice. I could maybe do something like, const array size and create a local constant, make that equal to 10. And then here, oh, I didn't give it a data type, it needs to be an int, right? Whole number of elements in an array, array size, do that. I've declared the array of size 10 here. Now we can call the function fill array. Or, so I called this fill array, but fill random might have been a better name. And notice as this is popping up, since we've included this, Visual Studio is nice enough to show us the function prototype. So I need to pass it. The first argument I need to pass it is the name of my array here in main. So my array and then the array size. If I wanted to fill all of the elements, I'll pass the array size. If I only wanted to maybe have it fill the first five. I can just pass it five. Remember, I don't want to pass the size that's larger than my array. And if I wanted to, I could go ahead and build now, but let's write one more function called print array. And I'm going to use some copy paste magic here. All right, I'm copying that, this prints the array values. All right. Precondition A is in reference to an integer array, N is the array length, so how many elements do I want it to print out? Post conditions, well, they're not overwritten, right? Element zero, elements with index zero to N minus one are written to the standard output stream, which is our console window. We're going to use C out, in other words. All right, so I want to call this print array. It still needs an array. It needs in. 
I want this to be read only. I'm going to use the const modifier, right? Because remember when we pass an array, we're actually passing a reference to that array. And I don't want this function to accidentally overwrite anything. It should just be reading the elements. So now that we've defined this, let's go ahead and copy this over to our CPP file. Sorry, now that we've declared it, we'll define it here. And so to do so, right, we get rid of that semicolon. We've got our curly brackets. Say for int i equals zero, i less than n plus plus i. Right, when we traverse through an array or loop through, a lot of this code looks like c out eight index i. If I wanted to print one per line, I could do that. Multiple lines, I might use the set width and have to have some sort of counter as to how many per line. All right, let's take a look here. C out's undefined. Well, C out is defined in the IO stream library. Have I included the IO stream library anywhere? No, I need to include it here. All right? pound include IO stream, save that. And I do it here in the CPP file. Oh, missing an angle bracket here somehow. All right, in the CPP file. I don't include it in the header file. All right, nothing in the header file depends on IO stream or depends on C standard library. So we don't include those there. Right. Here's where we include them where we have the dependency. Now it is possible in the future that you might have dependencies on data types and other libraries and we'll have to include them in here, but we don't have that right now. All right, so now this is going to print this. I need the scope resolution, right? And now I can go to main.cpp and we can call the function print array. Right here then we'll go ahead and pass it my array, the name of my array main, array size. And now I'm going to hit build, which will compile then all the files in the project, the CPP files, you can see here, it says it's compiling array hw.cpp, main.cpp, generating code. It succeeded, no fail. So start without debugging. All right, it pops up, filled our array with random values, printed them one per line. All right, so now you've seen an example of how to use multiple files in C++. Whenever we're writing functions or eventually when we learn to write classes, Right, we're going to declare things here in the header file. We'll actually then define the functions, right? The source code implementation here in the CPP file. All right, so try it on your own, right? Follow along with this one to make sure it works and then try it on your own for some of your own projects. Good luck, everyone.